and welcome back to the Vanier Woodshop. My name is Mr. Dakinowicz and today we're going to talk about the sanders that we have in our shop. So the three main stations that we do sanding at are our downdraft table, which is this one with our random orbital sanders. We'll talk about those in a second. We also have a nice edge sander here. We'll talk about that last. And we're going to start over here with our spindle sander. So this is a spindle sander. The spindle sander is awesome for doing curves. It has different spindles. We can have smaller ones. We can have bigger ones. They're quite easy to change and interchange. And they allow us to sand inside and outside curves. This is not the best machine if you need to sand something straight. But if you're trying to sand, say, the squirrel that you're going to make or a push stick, it works really well. So right now we've got this board. It's flat. We're going to pull out our Sharpie again. Again, we never use Sharpie in the wood shop, but so you can see what I'm doing, we're going to talk about it. And we're going to say that we have to put on a slight curve. We're just going to remove this small amount of material. So when we do this, we can use this spindle sander and it will remove material well. So our on off button's down here. This machine's nice and quiet. It rotates this way, so we're always going to feed into it. And all we're doing is pushing up and cutting for standing in. We're applying a little bit of pressure. We don't need to put a ton of pressure on. Again, we're going to shut it off, wait for it to stop. This machine, as you saw, stops really quickly. So we've just really quickly, we're able to sand off that material. So when you have projects that have curves that you need to get sanded, this material works really well, or this machine works really well. So the things we need to be careful of when we're using the spindle sander. Again, we're always going to have our safety glasses on because we're using a machine. Hearing protection, as you heard, this machine's not crazy loud. We're always going to recommend that you wear hearing protection. It's not required for this machine. The spindle moves up and down, and it will allow us to use more of the sanding belt or the sanding sleeve. The thing that we want to worry about is when it's spinning, we don't want to have anything dangly, any jewelry on, any long hair we want to tie back. We want to make sure that this doesn't get in our way. We always want to feed against the rotation of the sander. And if we ever twist the table, and this table does pivot, if we're ever moving that table to use to sand, we always want to sand on the downside so that if our material falls away, it doesn't get caught. So I'm going to try really quick and loosen this off. And theoretically, we can twist our sanding machine. So I'm not even going to turn it on, but I am going to show you. So if we're sanding on the angle, we always want to sand underneath. So our material will just fall away. It won't get stuck. If we try and sand on top, what could happen is it will jam and it'll just throw our material away because it'll catch in a pinch point on the bottom. So we always sand on the damp side. And then it just locks on. You always want to make sure this is square before. You can ask me or check with me. But we want to check it before we turn the machine on. Any adjustments that we're going to make on this guy, we do that prior to turning the machine on. Again, we're going to wait till it shuts off before we leave. It's really quick to change the spindles. I'll show you that when you need to do that, if that's something that you need to work on. The last couple things that I want to talk about, and I don't have a sleeve with me right now, but if we're sanding something that sits over top, we want to make sure that we have at least an inch of clearance all around, and we want to place our material on. I actually do have a circle. So if this was wood and we were going to sand this, we would set this over top. Then we would turn our machine on. Then we would do our sanding, keep making sure we're holding it. We would keep our hand on it, shut off our machine, wait for the spindle to stop before removing it. The danger of this moving while we're trying to put it on, if it catches, it can grab, spin it around, damage the machine, damage us, or damage our project, which is probably the thing that we care most about. So we want to always make sure that, and we want to try and keep our fingers at least two inches away from the sander if possible. So again, two inches is roughly the width of your hand. That's actually a little bit longer, but two inches is the number that we're using. We don't want to sand things with our fingers really close. It has the opportunity then to sand off the tips of our fingers, which hurts. So we don't want to do that. Now we're going to talk about our orbitals or our random orbitals. So this is our downdraft table. 
This is an awesome thing that we've brought in the last couple of years. What it basically is, there's four big air filters right underneath. There's holes in the mat, so the dust actually sucks down. There are big fans underneath that pull all the dust through the table, through vents, so it gets rid of all our sandpaper, and then just blows the air out of the bottom. It is two sides, so there's the right side from where I am, the left side from where you are, and then the other side, which again is my left, your right at this point. So they have two different light switches on the side, which I'll show you where they are. But you turn the light switch on, the table turns on, you shut the light switch off, the table turns off. So when you're sanding something, so I've grabbed this little off cut of 2x4, and if I had to sand this down, so I'm just going to make some pencil marks. So now you can see that I've got some pencil marks that I need to sand off. So I'm always going to start with a lower grit sandpaper. So I'm going to sand from an 80 to a 120 to a 150. For most of the projects that you're doing in the shop, 150 would be the most that you need to sand. If you're doing something that needs more sanding, we'll change it. We have three random orbital sanders. They are all wonderfully identified with an 80, a 120, and a 150 on the top. That's the sanding paper that's on them. When we look underneath, we can see that this sandpaper is still fresh. If you feel like you need new sandpaper, please talk to me. 90% of the time the sandpaper is still fine. Sometimes it does need to be replaced if it rips or tears. So, these guys work really well. When the downdraft table's on, I'm not going to turn it on because it's very loud, but we're just going to hold our material. It's got a nice non-skid plastic pad. There's an on-off switch right on the front. We turn it on, let it get to full power. We can begin sanding. And when possible, we always want to work so we're sanding with the grain. So now that I've sanded, I want to let the machine stop spinning. Once it stops spinning, I can set it down. If we set it down too early, we're going to start to damage this table. So really quickly, it stops. I set it down. I would then move to 120, and then I'd move to 150. As you can see, I've already removed my um, pencil marks. And when I was saying we want to sand with the grain, it means if our grain is running up and down on this board, it's really nice to see. We're going to sand in this direction. We don't want to sand across the grain because it leaves scratches that are more difficult to get out later. Even though this is a random orbital, even though it does do a really good job of sanding sideways, we do want to try and stand with the grain when possible. The next machine we're going to talk about is this guy. This is our edge sander. So this is a quality machine. It's actually made um, for cabinet shops. So this is a really, really good industrial machine where the random orbital, or sorry, where the spindle sander removes material quite slowly. This guy removes material really quick. It does have a wonderful feature. We're only ever going to have one person on this machine at a time, but what we do have is the ability for somebody to work on this end. It has a nice round section. It works very similar to the spindle sander, only you can't change the size. And then we, of course, have our long straight, so when we're doing something straight. A couple things that we want to make sure of when we're using this machine. We want to check that it is square to the table. This one's fairly new. It's usually in great shape. I check it every day before you get here. The other thing I didn't note, you always want to have your safety glasses on when you're working on these machines. So this one's a bit louder, but if we're sanding on the edge, we can easily sand on this edge. If we're sanding on the face, our belt is running this way towards the back. There's a nice arrow right here that shows the direction. We want to, again, pull against the rotation of the sander. So, if we're pulling, we're going to sand like this, where we're pulling away. The fun thing, or the thing that I really want to make sure that you understand, because this is spinning this way, if we have sharp corners on our, on our, um, on our stock or a piece of wood, it can actually catch if we touch our tailing end first. So when you're standing at the saw, your right hand needs to touch just before your left hand. So to over-exaggerate that, if I'm bringing a piece of wood in, I'm coming in on such an angle that my right hand is touching just before, and then I'm bringing this in. 
If I come in from the left side, it has a tendency to grab and catch my corner and it'll actually throw the wood away from me. So in reality, and we'll do a close up of this so that you can see, but we're touching the front or the leading edge just before we touch the back edge. It's almost imperceptible, um, but we'll show you how that looks. So when I turn this on, it's a little bit louder. We can also sand the end on this machine. And the nice thing is this has a nice little maple bar that's been put on the side. So if I need to sand something that's skinnier than it is long, I can use this as a stabilizer and cut in. Again, my fingers want to be at least two inches from the blade. And that allows me to keep them there without doing this. If I was to try and sand something that's skinnier than it is long, over here, the potential is that it's going to catch that end and flick it to the side by moving to this right hand side of the sander, it allows me to actually hold that nice and close. So let's turn this on and I'll show you what I mean. So if I'm going to stand, that's nicely sanded. Now I can sand the end, lining up. This one does take a moment to sand down. The one thing you notice that I constantly pressed into the sanding belt and then removed my material, that's to prevent it from burning. If I was to just take a piece of wood and hold it against the machine while it's running, I would end up burning my wood and it would be really difficult to get those burn marks off. You want to make sure that you're holding your material to the table, that you're not trying to sand something up here where there's no support. We want to support our material always. If there's a special operation that you need to do, you can talk to me about it individually. But all of, for all of the testing, for all of our procedures, we want to make sure that our material is sitting right on our table, either this table or this table, and pressed firmly against it. We want to You can adjust this table. We can get into that a little bit more. There's some set screws underneath if you have wider material. Uh, for example, the grade eight gumball machine usually has to go a little bit lower. And we want to set the table so that we use as much of the belt. This belt is pretty much done and will be replaced um, before September comes. But that's sort of how this works. We also have another secondary dust extraction. This can be moved around. So if you're working over here on the end, it's really nice because you can set this up, pull it over and bring over the dust extraction to keep the dust out of the air. This works really great. Maintenance put this in for us um, and it's been a very special thing. So again, Mr. Dakinowicz, we're here in the Vanier wood shop. These are our sanders. The last sander that I'm not actually going to talk to you about on the demo, we do have a thickness sander. It works similar to a planer, but for finishing, um, it works really well. It's a little bit finicky and it's something that I'll show you in person when you need to use it. It's not one that I can really demo here. Just know that we do have a thickness sander as well. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.